Thursday, September 13th, 4 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Guys, I want to talk about not only Hurricane Florence that we're all very familiar with, um, another storm that may come up into the Gulf of Mexico later on next week. One that we almost forgot about, but first, Hurricane Florence is slowly making its way towards the coast of North Carolina, moving at about five miles per hour. Could be moving slower than that by now. You can see the strong outer rain bands here on a visible radar at IntelliCast.com. Almost see another uh, eyewall forming. It's not strengthening. It's actually weakening, which is a good thing. And in fact, I think I may have found why the storm weakened a little bit on its uh, journey to the East Coast. And this is just a theory, but here's what I think. This screenshot, you see, this is a collection of two screenshots I've made into one fit, uh, picture. The right screenshot is the sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean on September the 11th. The left screenshot is the same location on September 12th. September the 11th, Florence was right here in the dark orange water, which represents 86 degrees, 30 degrees Celsius. The orange color represents 84 degrees, which is like 29 Celsius. Well, you can see there's much more dark orange on this map, which when you look at this, you would think, okay, if this thing is going towards North Carolina with all that dark orange, then more than likely it will at least remain a Cat 4, possibly strengthen because there's nothing to slow it down. And in fact, there was very little, if any, wind shear on its uh, path as of September 11th. Then on the 12th, it changed. See, there's much more orange, which is cooler water. Not much, I get that. It's 86 over here and 84 over here, but it is cooler, and it did weaken. Went from a Cat 4 to a Cat 3 in cooler water. So I'm wondering if this is what happened. If over here, as a Category 4, Let's say these were weak 86 numbers, okay? And again, we're talking about sea surface temperatures. So what if the storm was so big that it mixed up the surface waters enough to cool them down a couple of degrees and brought the storm down? So the storm actually weakened itself because it was so strong. Just a possibility, but it's kind of odd that the sea surface temperatures went from 86 degrees in this big wide area to 84 dominating most of the area and the path of the storm and it did weaken which is a good thing we didn't want to see 140 mile an hour winds along the coast of north carolina or south carolina anywhere for that matter still going to bring a lot of rain though um, that event is underway you guys are very uh, very familiar with that i'll show you the rain totals real quick and this is subject to change uh, right now adventure sky it's showing locations receiving 28 inches between Wilmington and Jacksonville. Huge rain event, double digits all the way up to Raleigh. Um, if this thing turns south, which it does look like, it's going to impact South Carolina uh, for a couple of days. There's going to be large rainfall totals in South Carolina, possibly Georgia, then moving up through Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Pennsylvania. Over the next five to six days so this is going to be a long duration event dropping a lot of rain all of the tributaries lakes rivers and streams will be at maximum capacity probably by this time next week flowing very very high power outages in the area right now in north carolina you're looking at almost 80,000 customers and look for that number to go up luckily there's a lot of crews over here from other states surrounding states to help restore power quickly so hopefully nobody will be without power for very long here's a visible look at uh, hurricane florence before it gets dark that's the last daylight image of today and you can see that storm is absolutely huge there's the center of rotation almost ashore moving at four maybe five miles per hour it's just going to sit here and drop tremendous amounts of rain you can figure at least an inch an hour, and if it's sitting here for over 24 hours, well, then you've got over 24 inches of rain in some places. Um, I want to talk about a big storm that's about to impact. There's a good look at Florence here on Google Earth. I wanted to show you a picture that was sent in by Cindy G. from Topsail Beach, North Carolina, right here. This picture is about four hours old, maybe five. 
it's from today and you can see water um, that's salt water inundating the community and it sits right along the coast so storm surge and uh, flooding inland flooding are going to be big issues with Florence won't see the high winds we'll see sustained winds of 40 probably 60 miles per hour absolutely and that will eventually get some branches into those uh, power lines but no real high end 140 mile an hour winds won't see that thank goodness but this thing could make a double landfall uh, wouldn't be surprised uh, to see that and it's going to take a slow journey down the eastern seaboard towards south carolina the storm here over in the philippine sea it's a super typhoon right now it needs to be mentioned because it's going to make landfall in the northern philippines and i'm sure the people in the philippines are well aware this storm is in route but it's going to make landfall in less than 36 hours in fact about 24 hours there's the storm right there and when you can see all the way down that blue color all the way through the eye you mean that means there's no wind shear so the storm has a optimal environment for maintaining its strength unfortunately it's going to make landfall right here in the northern philippines let's remove the weather feature it's going right in this direction it's going to encounter some mountains which will impact the storm strength i've seen that before with uh, one of the strongest storms ever on earth ever recorded on earth hurricane patricia that's one of the strongest ever recorded in modern times and when it ran into the mountainous uh, shoreline of mexico it was within a few hours a half a day down to a tropical storm so these mountains will influence this storm how much doesn't really look like a lot because it's uh, forecasted to be a cat four over on the opposite side of the island over on the west side so right now this area here in the area of Cabagan along this river which is fairly populated you can see farms there's communities all along this river and that river is going to do its job manage the water from this storm and sometimes these rivers swell like we're going to see along the eastern seaboard so in the area of San Pablo especially this area here Cabagan sits right on the river cat five coming your way in less than 24 hours and it looks like if i'm not mistaken it's going to be over this part of the island for a day which isn't good let's take another look and see i think it showed a day it's going a little closer actually we can just do this here so 24 hours landfall 36 hours. Oh, good. So it's only going to be over land for 12 hours, moving pretty fast. So that's a good thing. Still, expect a lot of damage from that storm. That is a super typhoon. And right now, it's the strongest storm on the planet. And like I said, guys, we can't forget about Isaac. It could become another uh, system in the Gulf of Mexico in about a week. So we have to definitely keep our eye on that. Right now, all eyes are on Florence as it's making its final approach into the eastern seaboard of the united states this storm has made the long journey like hurricane irma it's a much different storm than hurricane irma um, irma made the journey though from west africa all the way to the u.s mainland and that's kind of rare storms don't normally do that but in september during peak hurricane season anything's possible in the atlantic ocean or the caribbean and the gulf of mexico that's why i say we can't take our eyes off of isaac but this storm is about to wind up its 4,000 mile journey with regard to landfall and then the rainfall begins thanks for watching guys have a super day and be safe out there